Recently, we took a look at the Raspberry Pi 4 on this channel, and uh, I was blown away by it. I, I think its ability to play Dreamcast games in particular was amazing, because uh, seeing the Raspberry Pi itself evolve over time has been super impressive, especially at its pricing. I mean, it's very attainable, and there are a lot of projects going on around it even now, and some of the cases that are starting to come out are just Awesome, and that's what I was waiting for. The Raspberry Pi 4 itself is fairly powerful for the price and certainly the size and the power draw, but we need some cool stuff to kind of go around it, specifically cases like, I don't know, a Game Boy? Yeah, today we're gonna be taking a look at the Pi Boy DMG from Experimental Pi. So if you guys enjoy this video and the look at a Raspberry Pi 4 Game Boy case, make sure you like the video down below and I'll look into more weird and interesting cases for the Raspberry Pi 4 because I think on its own, it is just a really cool board to pick up. But then when you pair it with some cool cases like these, it kind of takes it to the next level. So let's talk about this casing itself. On their website, they have several different kits you can get. If you don't need a Raspberry Pi 4, you can just buy the kit itself, or you can go completely all out and they'll have everything assembled for you and it'll show up just like this one did. It already has a Raspberry Pi 4 installed. It already has an SD card loaded up that has RetroPie. You just need to provide your own games. It even came with a full five volt, three amp uh, power adapter. It does use micro USB, a little bit of a downer. USB-C would have been preferred, but you're mostly just gonna use that to charge anyway. So let's go ahead and power this on and check it out. Now we do have a power switch up here, they, they really went all out to make this feel like an old school Game Boy itself. This is gonna take a minute to power on. It does have safe shutdown as well. So if you just power it off with that, it'll just go ahead and make sure everything shuts down correctly. And it's gonna load us right in to RetroPie where I already have several games installed. So let's take a look here. We have Dreamcast games, have some Game Boy Advance games, Nintendo 64, Nintendo. They do ship with some ports on there like Quake, which is really funny to play on a Game Boy DMG itself. I did load a PSP game on there just to see how it ran. The PSP games actually run pretty well, and yes, it is Crisis Core. Go figure, I know. Uh, and then, of course, PlayStation as well. I loaded up Mega Man X4. We can check that one out. Um, but let's go over here to Dreamcast games, because that is one of the best parts about the Raspberry Pi 4, is just how well it can actually run Dreamcast games. So here we are with Sonic Adventure 1. We checked this out before on uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 when we did a video on it, and it ran well there. And as expected, runs fine here as well. This case does have active cooling, so you shouldn't see the Raspberry Pi like get throttled or anything like that. And I mean, you can see it's holding a good frame rate. I think for the most part, for what they have to work with on something like a DMG Game Boy, I think the controls are good enough to play, but keep in mind we have uh, these bumper, or I guess you'd call them triggers, technically bumpers, right, on the back here. And because they don't work so well, I think people are gonna remap them at times to some of these front buttons if they can. And the joystick is kind of down and to the left. So you do get what we've dealt with before with like the switch where you kind of get this like claw grip going on. So keep that one in mind. If you're, if you're somebody who has larger hands, using this joystick might become kind of an issue for your hand. It might get kind of cramped up, but as far as Dreamcast performance on this system, it is very good. I think the active cooling does help out with that. And then of course, the Raspberry Pi 4 with uh, the em some of the emulators on here for the Dreamcast, they're, they're just really good. So here we are in a Game Boy Advance game. This is Mario Kart and it, it runs, Game Boy Advance games run very, very well on, uh, on the Pi 4. It runs well here also, and it looks good on the screen, but my big issue, once again, are those back buttons. They are, they're not easy to press at times, especially if you're playing the game and you're trying to focus. So that, keep that in mind. You may end up having to remap them maybe to buttons on the front since you have some extra ones. The Game Boy Advance matches up so well for something like the Pi Boy DMG, the library of games for the Game Boy Advance, uh, the fact that a lot of them are platformers, so you'll take more advantage of this D-pad, right? RPGs, uh, I mean, the list goes on for why the Game Boy Advance 
really works well with something like this, this casing. And again, the library really fits it. And I mean, come on, there's so many Game Boy Advance games. The emulation's good. It, it's just it's just a good fit overall. PS1 emulation on here is also great. I tried some 3D games, like Crash Bandicoot, for example, works fine. I'm playing Mega Man X4 right now because I, I like Mega Man X4. What can I say? Mega Man X is awesome. But if you're looking into like the massive library of RPGs, on the PS1, something like this works beautifully for that. I mean, really, but even like platformers like this that would use the D-pad really well, I mean, it, it just works perfectly. This is great for PS1 games, Dreamcast games, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis. A lot of those will work fine, but I do wanna check out a weak spot right now. And I think it's mostly just for the Pi 4 in general. Uh, and that is the Nintendo 64. So the biggest thing here is you can hear the sound is kind of choppy right now if you listen. And that comes to kind of like these slowdowns and, it, and it's and it's kind of skipping frames here and there. And it's it just struggles still with the Nintendo 64 itself. I don't know if it's just the emulation scene with the retro uh, Raspberry Pi 4 right now through RetroPie uh, because most everything else plays really well. But unfortunately, the Nintendo 64 isn't quite there yet. And when you start playing something like this, Mario 64, which you want to be a very responsive experience, there are some 64 games, of course, that are like, yeah, it was like 10 frames back then, whatever, fine. Like Goldeneye, you know what? Goldeneye on this runs probably better than the 64 and even, I mean, that makes sense since it was like 10 frames back then. I hope eventually we get to a point where the N64 is like flawless. But I do know I've talked to like MVG about this at times and it's just, it's unfortunately a struggle just seemingly the way that the Nintendo 64 was made. I mean, you can see it just, it feels slow. It's, it, if you played it, you would be able, I mean, you can kind of see it there. You see kind of the stuttering that's going on and it's noticeable immediately. So unfortunately, right out of the box, not the greatest Nintendo 64 experience. I'm sure there are things you could do to kind of play around with it and maybe get it to work better, but compared to the other emulators that are already on RetroPie, it is a bit of a letdown. Now they do have uh, several indicators up here for our Wi-Fi, our Bluetooth and battery. I do like that it tracks our battery life just through like a standard little battery bar right here. Nice to see that they have that kind of set up with the UI. When you do order one of these, it'll come in a full box. And again, it has everything you need inside, depending on the kit that you order, Order, though, you may have to do some assembly. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll look around this and then we'll take it apart so you can see how all this is happening inside. Now you can see, of course, on the front, we have six different face buttons here, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, our D-pad, which the D-pad is pretty good. It uh, doesn't press in all directions at the same time. Feels very much like the old school DMG D-pad. And then we have the analog stick that is used in the Joy-Con controllers. Again, that seems to be the, the most popular one to use. It's easy to set up, it's plug-in, and they're readily available pretty much everywhere. Start and select on the front here as well. They feel, again, just like the DMG. On the side here, we do have a slot for our SD card. This one came preloaded with a 64 gigabyte card. We also have HDMI out here, so you can plug this into a TV if you wanna do it that way. Maybe you're, you go over to a friend's house, you have this with you. Oh, let me plug this in and we'll, we'll fire up some like Mario Kart or something, you can do that. And then on the side here, we have our LCD brightness control. On the bottom, we have headphone jack, our power in, which is the micro USB. Like I said, it comes with a five volt, three amp uh, power cable. And then we have our volume rocker here. And then on the top, we have all of our I IO ports, which includes two USB USB 2, two USB 3, full ethernet. So it's really funny to think about that. This is a handheld device that has just a full on ethernet port, uh, power on and off there. And then on the back we have R and L. And I'm not a big fan of these buttons on the back here. They're hard to find and they don't always press because you kind of have to press at the right spot. Press too far over here, it won't, you won't get a solid click. You gotta press more towards the middle. Now under here, we do have our battery. This door pops off. This battery will be included with the kit. It comes outside of it. And this is a 4,500 milliamp at 3.7 volts. It is a plug-in 
battery. So you will install this yourself when it shows up. It's very, very easy, clearly marked and only uh, actually plugs in one way. From there, we have six different screws and that'll allow us to get the back off. Now with the back off, we can see a couple of customized boards here. We have one that is just above the Raspberry Pi 4. The Pi 4 is this kind of this green board right here. But above that, we have our active cooling, which would be our fan and then several cables coming off of it. If you get the kit without the Raspberry Pi 4, everything just plugs in. So there's no soldering involved. We can see several plugs here that go down and around. And then we have cables that would plug in. This is part of the header on the Raspberry Pi itself. So it plugs in and communicates that way, which is great. Everything is just very easy to set this all up. Also, I'm gonna give them some credit on the plastics that they decided to use for the shell itself. They feel very quality. I think it's just because that it's a very thick plastic. So when you actually screw this all together and you're holding it, it doesn't feel cheap. It actually feels high quality, which is great. It has some heft to it. Of course, you, you also have the Raspberry Pi 4 itself in there, but for the most part, it feels like a quality device. Now your kit may also come with different shoulder buttons for the back as well. And I changed them out for these ones here. These are the more raised uh, shoulder buttons. And unfortunately, even that isn't enough. It's, it's harder to find, even press. I think if these were more angled out, so you had more of a natural grip on it, and you just always knew where they were, that would be better. Unfortunately, that's probably the weakest part of this whole kit are these little back buttons here that just don't work that well in practice. Also, while it's cool to have a DMG Game Boy as the shell for a Raspberry Pi 4 to make it portable, you know what I'd really like is one that's more like a Game Boy Advanced. I, I think the form factor for the Game Boy Advance works way better for people who have larger hands. Uh, and it's probably gonna be more comfortable if you start bringing things like joysticks into the equation. Like this one has a joystick kind of in a strange spot. And I think the Game Boy Advance form factor would be great. I understand it might be kind of weird to get the Raspberry Pi 4 to fit in there and make it makes sense. For this, it was easy because obviously you have all of the IO, IO ports kind of sticking out of the top, but we've seen different ways where cases have rerouted them and done different things. That would be the form factor I would like to see Experimental Pi take a shot at is maybe work towards something like the Game Boy Advance. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it here for the Pi Boy DMG from Experimental Pi. I really like the idea of taking the Raspberry Pi 4 and adding it to cases like these, right? I mean, a portable case looks like a Game Boy and is pretty high quality. Like the shell itself is not cheap. So the overall idea of the Pi 4 becoming a portable system is great because of the amount of functionality that it has, especially in the emulation scene. Let me know though what you guys think about the Pi Boy DMG and what do you think about a Game Boy Advance version? Come on, Experimental Pi, you know you, know you wanna do that. I would, I would pick that up right away. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.